Thank you for being here. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Thank you for being part of this weather community. I want to give you an earthquake uh, update, uh, not just here across the Caribbean, uh, but a very uh, interesting, to say the least, scenario, kind of a scary scenario around the world. I want to show you that in uh, just a second. Now, overnight, there was a quake in Guatemala right along the coast, uh, kind of close to Guatemala City, 5.6 in magnitude, which is significant. Fortunately, it was pretty deep down the depth of this, about 58 kilometers down or 36 miles uh, down. And a couple days ago, there was another quake just off the coast of El Salvador. So watching that, we've had a little earthquake swarm, which is typical uh, near Puerto Rico, near the Dominican Republic, British and U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, the last uh, several days, nothing too big, nothing too significant as far as that is concerned. Know that I'm watching all of the earthquake activity around, but a new one last night uh, just off the coast of Guatemala. Now I want to take, here we are in the Caribbean right here. Let's go way out here as we swing back toward Europe. Over 300 earthquakes just over the last couple of days. An incredibly scary scenario out here. An earthquake swarm, so there's been a lot of them out in this region here, we swing over to Greece as we swing back to some of the islands in some of the very popular islands of Greece. One in particular, uh, Santorini, which actually consists of a, a few islands in uh, that area, which is a volcano. It's a shield volcano. Well, there's been quake after quake in these. I mentioned Puerto Rico, how we've had a little earthquake swarm. Most of those have been 3.0 or less in magnitude. These over here, here's uh, Santorini, these have been very significant. We're talking over five, almost six in magnitude, upwards of 300 just over the last couple days. Look at the recording. So here's kind of the uh, major island, uh, which uh, about 15,000 people do live on, and they are uh, self-evacuating at this point because this is a volcanic island, which we could relate to. And this just shows the readings over the last couple of days of the earthquake activity. The reds on the map would be some more of those significant earthquakes. So the fear is not only a, a, a bigger earthquake, earthquake or a continuation of earthquakes, well, the possibility of volcanic activity, these are active volcanoes uh, over here. So that's why folks are leaving. Is this a sign of a bigger eruption? Well, it's really hard to tell. The science behind that is very difficult. But back in uh, 1950, there was an eruption and you see it right here. This is one of the slightly smaller islands just to the west of Santorini. And you can see the eruption there of this uh, shield volcano. So that is the fear that this is going to happen. This is that same spot that I just showed you. And here's Santorini as we look over here, just kind of looking across and you can see the crater here. And these are folks that uh, come out tourists that take little boats across. This is a very, this part of the, this island is not inhabited. Uh, but again, the folks on the uh, other uh, neighboring areas are self-evacuating because of this. Now, this is a shield volcano uh, with that, a very significant lava flow Flows would be a potential, uh, so uh, and no doubt. Then you you get you get the whole lift of the uh, the smoke and all of that, the ash that lifts up, and then you have to watch out for the winds. There's no sign of uh, an eruption right at this uh, point, but because of the volcanic activity, they are highly concerned uh, of that, or at least folks are scientists are there nonstop trying to figure figure it out. Now, a shield volcano doesn't lend itself to a Plinian eruption. A Plinian eruption are those crazy ones the most explosive type that have that big ash cloud that goes way up into the sky, about 30,000 feet or about a 9,000 meters way up, way up high. So this wouldn't have a Plinian eruption if it were to erupt. It is a shield volcano, but those in itself are very significant. But again, over 300 earthquakes in just the last couple of days in that island uh, in uh, Greece. So just kind of monitoring that, something we can relate to across the Caribbean. Now overnight, not only have I been monitoring some of the earthquake activity in Gu Guatemala, but a couple of showers that have been nearby the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and even the ABC Islands, Northern Colombia, Northern Venezuela, and then it's gonna be wet at times in Guyana and Suriname. So I'll zoom down to that, to the north of us, where we keep an eye on some of the weather as we go uh, through this time of year, west to east motion with some of those bigger systems rolling by parts of Canada and the northern in central United States. I'm not seeing any signs of a widen out in just a second, not seeing fronts that are going to dip too uh, 
uh, terribly uh, far down. But anywhere from Antigua, Barbuda, Dominica, uh, Barbados, uh, St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Puerto Rico today, Dominican Republic, a couple of those hit or miss showers that will be around. Kind of that flow coming out of the south, so spotty showers, Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize, and then you can see tomorrow just some of that moisture building in as we get toward Guyana and Suriname. That rain chance is going to be higher. Gale force uh, winds strong winds coming out of the east with all the fronts that are sitting up to the north we get that strong flow around so i'll show you those seas in just a second but watch out for some spotty showers in the dominican republic this is friday by the way and you see belize honduras nicaragua also some of those scattered showers and still watching out for some rain guyana and Suriname. so bigger picture i mentioned most of that action uh, to the north running from the west to the east that keeps us on the warm side of things icing event possible from west virginia up into parts of uh, Maryland and uh, Pennsylvania with this system. But note that the next couple systems that roll by parts of the United States, they don't dip down far to the south. A lot of energy coming out of California, another system. This by the weekend working its way over toward parts of New England. And you can see not moving down to the south like we had a couple weeks ago, right? We had these fronts diving down, but this is that west to east motion north of us that plays into our weather. So we continue with that easterly and then southerly flow right across the Caribbean for at least over the next week or so. But as we get down the road, the fronts will start to get a bit closer. It's going to get a little bit more active here. This is by the middle of the month, so we're looking uh, almost a week out in time here. This is by February 11th, Tuesday. Now you start to see the front starting to dip down more to the south and that energy right along it. You see it right in there, a little snow on the back side of this, severe weather potential. Uh, so seeing these fronts that may eventually clip us by in the northern Caribbean, once we work our way into the middle of the month and watching out for a cold shot of air by the middle of the month. So you see how it will eventually start to get a bit more active and then going way out in time here. This is by the time we get into uh, February 16th. Uh, so the following weekend, you see again a front dipping down. But with that said, not super far down. So we still have those winds that'll be coming in out of the south. But everything's staying on the choppy side through the Caribbean. Of course, watching the Atlantic waters, the Atlantic passageways. Here's meters, feet on the right-hand side of your screen. And you see everything really elevated across the Caribbean. It is going to be on the choppier side, the bumpier side over the next few days. This is by the time we work our way into Friday. Watching the Atlantic waters near Bermuda, Bermuda North. That's where there'll be some higher seas at times with those fronts that will be coming off the uh, coast of the United States. States. Speaking of which, watching that here. So here's Bermuda. Here we are in the uh, northern Bahamas right through here. And the fronts kind of pivot their way up toward the Atlantic region of Canada. This is by the time we get into uh, tomorrow with some of that snow potential over toward parts of New Brunswick, over toward uh, Cape Breton, watching uh, that just kind of clipping by and then we'll see a mix of either snow or rain over toward Newfoundland as we work our way into Friday as this next system moves by but it does kind of weaken as it gets closer to Bermuda so if we get a shower the rain uh, totals not very high you see us in Jamaica we may get a few spots that get brushed by a couple showers especially eastern sections but those rain totals not super significant could see a little bit more may get a few spots around 25 millimeters of rain or an inch of rain parts of the Dominican Republic and then as I was circling earlier Guadalupe south over toward Dominica. We may catch a couple more showers just with that easterly breeze. We may see a few spots closing in on 50 millimeters of rain or two inches of rain. Spotty, Grenada, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, St. Lucia, Barbados, uh, Trinidad, but you get toward Guyana and Suriname. That's where we'll get some totals of 75 millimeters of rain or three inches of rain. Belize, chance of a couple scattered showers and then pulling down to the south, we may get some totals pushing 50 millimeters of rain or two inches of rain. Much of Mexico on the uh, dry side and then swinging up toward uh, Texas. So you see the rain chance not super high, but it's around 30% chance today in Jamaica, a 40% chance tomorrow and Friday. Rain chance stays low, but we may even get clipped by a spotty shower uh, in uh, the Cayman Islands this morning. I showed you some of that moisture uh, that is nearby. We've had some of those clouds rolling by for some of us. 20 to 30% chance uh, for us in uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Just about a 20% chance in Barbados. Let me know if you have some of that breezy weather. I'll be uh, watching the comments throughout the day going back and 
forth. Love communicating with you in the comments section. St. Lucia, 20 to 30 percent chance and a 20 to 30 percent chance in Grenada. Rain chance, 20 percent. The next couple of days, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and we're looking at about a 30 percent chance the next three days in Martinique. As we work our way into Dominica, you see how it is a little higher. By the time we get into Friday, the rain chance does bump up slightly, about a 40 percent chance, a 20 percent chance the next couple of days uh, in Guadalupe, up to a 30 percent chance on Friday, and then isolated passing showers, Antigua, Barbuda, 30 percent chance today, 20% chance tomorrow. The next couple of days, St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat, rain chance 20%, up to a 30% chance by Friday, 20% chance today in Anguilla and St. Bart's, and a 30% chance for tomorrow. Isolated shower, St. Martin, St. Bonstatia, rain chance holding at about 30% in Puerto Rico. So we're not looking at a washout, but some uh, passing showers possible. Same thing, uh, U.S. and British Virgin Islands, rain chance 20% today and a 30% chance tomorrow on our Thursday. Bahamas were mainly dry. Southern Bahamas, we may see a shower too. Turks and Caicos, the rain chance not super high, a 20% chance tomorrow and Friday. Dominican Republic, as I mentioned, eastern sections, better chance of rain scattered, about a 40% chance for the next couple of days, mainly dry in Haiti. We may see a sprinkle or two in our northern end. Belize, we're going to see some scattered showers. Again, not all of us, but as I showed you and I circled earlier, we'll see that chance of some scattered showers tomorrow and uh, Friday. We'll be up to about a 40 to 50 percent chance. Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire, even a couple showers have been by overnight. Rain chance isn't very high, but as you can tell, I've been watching that, watching a couple of the showers. But Guyana, the rain chance stays on the elevated side. Suriname especially, a 70 percent chance today, a 60% chance for tomorrow, then trending down Cuba. We're mainly dry over the next three days, western, central, and eastern, and isolated showers, Costa Rica and Panama, and about a 40% chance in Nicaragua, and about a 40, maybe a 50% chance as we work our way into Honduras over the next uh, couple of days. Guatemala and El Salvador monitoring that earthquake activity, mainly dry in Mexico City, rain chance about 20 to 30% across the uh, Yucatan, a little bit more over toward uh, Cozumel, uh, mainly dry in in uh, Merida and Campeche. Northern Colombia rain chance 20%, 30% chance holding steady in northern Venezuela and Bermuda. Those fronts moving by, but not a lot with them. So we may get clipped by a shower too, but that should be it. But the seas will be elevated at times and some of that windy weather. So that warm air surge does continue, tracking some of those areas of rain that I highlighted. Bigger fronts will get closer later this month. That's why I widened out the picture to show you that. And watching those water temperatures as we get a little bit closer toward the hurricane season, I'll be highlighting more uh, of that again, monitoring everything even in the off season and watching that earthquake activity. I will keep you posted on that. All right, thank you for being part of this weather community and have a really good day ahead.